compromised because it will interfere with my life spirit. And then yeah. their actions sort of affect that, but it, it becomes a, a instead of just, you know, not – so they're actually compromising against their own life spirit. Did I, I just said that in a very yeah, confusing you, way. You, but. What you're doing is you're describing um, taking this and making – instead of really understanding what it means, Mm-hmm. And you ha- in order to understand what it means, you have to really understand what I said about primary and secondary choices. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times you'll be doing things that you don't want to particularly do on a local level, but you are glad to do them be- because they support something that's more important to you. Mm-hmm. So this is not about always doing what you want. It's about always ending up investing your life spirit in those things that matter most to you. Right. And well, it's being- like... It- Okay, I'm sorry, guys. And, and also being true to yourself in the level of being honest, mm-hmm. um, being um, uh, living according to your highest values, right? Um, you know, uh, organizing your life around your real aspirations, mm-hmm. rather than things like concepts. You know, how ideals are concepts. A lot of people right. have ideals rather than have. Uh, outcomes that they're after, goals that they're after, creations that mm-hmm. they want to make. And uh, in living, you know, mostly our world is in the belief business. And I make a difference between the belief business and the creating business. And in the belief di- business, it matters what you believe. And a lot of people in the belief business are selling various beliefs. And they could be anything from religious to philosophical to scientific to um, political economic there's a it's a big it's a big um market <laughs> right um, and the thing that we can understand about creators is creators believe all kinds of stuff great creators that believed things that are totally opposite to other great creators it doesn't matter what you believe now this is a sort of an outrageous notion from the standpoint of um, uh, are the, generally how people think about things because they generally think that if you have the right belief, then um, things will turn out. Right. And your job is to go and find the right belief. And is, what so we're saying is manifest. totally right. does not matter what you believe. Mm-hmm. And what does matter is how well you create. Right, and it, I think that goes to sort of the, you know, the kind of law of attraction kind of movement that as I just, you know, as I just hold these beliefs that everything will come to me, then everything will come to me, and then people get very disappointed that it, it things don't come to them and think, well, I'm not good because I'm not attracting what I should be attracting, and, and it just starts to snowball into this really sort of messy kind of thing rather than, saying, what would I like to create today? And then, then yeah. going and maybe creating it. You know, yeah, it, and it's not, kind of not like... to mention that um, the um, <laughs> what's really interesting is uh, people who do not have any particular beliefs around that have mm-hmm. exactly the same experience of sometimes things really fall into place when they're creating, and they don't have right. any particular belief about it. But people in the belief business are looking for uh, proof of their belief. And so if you happen to get a parking space, and it's you, I don't know, it seems to be a lot of parking spaces that are, you know, the subject of the stories about it, what a miracle it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though. It's like, oh, i got a parking space right in front of this. <laughs> and it's That's because I was holding the vision. Right. Uh, other people also sometimes get parking spaces, and they weren't holding the vision. <laughs> right. Um, here's, here's what we say. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with structure, the nature of structure, uh, the structure of things. Um, you can't fool mother structure. Structure is like this. Uh, structure is a relationship among parts that give rise to patterns of behavior. So in music, I have structures. In uh, film, I have structures. In um, buildings, I have structures. And the structures really determine uh, the behaviors. Uh, a building, for example, you walk into a building, it will determine where you walk. Right. 
And, uh, for example, you don't walk through walls and Mm -hmm. um, you go through corridors and you walk upstairs or you go in elevators. So the underlying structure of anything determines its behavior. Mm -hmm. There are two kinds of behaviors that people generally have in their life. One is oscillating and one is advancing. An oscillating pattern is one in which you set out for what you want you have it for a period of time. But then there's a reversal. And at the end of the pattern, you no longer have what you want. The great relationship that didn't last. The great uh, business that turned into a financial loss. You know, we all have stories like this. And those are there's a pattern to them. They actually reoccur. They're not arbitrary. The events may be different, but the dance steps are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. So what is that dis- that distinction then between just oscillating and, and advancing? Okay, well, just to say an advancing pattern is that you set out for what you want to create, uh, you take the steps and you do whatever you do, You have the success, and that success becomes a platform for future success. So that's a building kind of thing. Uh, A lot of times I'll describe this as two rubber bands in a room for the oscillating pattern. Imagine you're in the center of the room, and you want to walk to the wall at your left. And as you begin to approach that wall, the rubber band in front of you is relaxing, but the rubber band behind you is becoming more tense. And this is what I mean by the path of least resistance, by the way. I'm using the scientific version of it, not the colloquial easy way out version. But that energy always moves where it's easiest for it to go. So if you've accomplished your goal, but you have this big rubber band pulling you back, (laughs) then there's a good chance that no matter how sincere you are or what a good person you are or whatever you did, that that success is not sustainable in that structure. And the rubber band uh, on the one wall is desire, aspiration, you know, things that you want. And the rubber band on the other wall are various concepts that you hold. And I mean all concepts. And I'm not talking about negative beliefs, and I'm not talking about um, uh, um, other kinds of, uh, you know, things that people in the belief business would say you have to have a good belief and not a bad belief. I mean all beliefs can't hold you back. Now, the way that that rubber band behind you gets cut is to realize a few things. One is that it's really not about, when you're creating something, it's about the creation, not about you. So the focus really is on this thing I'm bringing into being and not how am I doing, how am I doing. That's a reorientation. Um, It's not to say that your beliefs change. It's to say you leave them at the door. They're irrelevant in your creative process. People in the belief business want to make it all relevant. You know, everything's supposed to say something about you. Right. Um, so, and, so you get very stuck in that, 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 that place rather than just moving forward. You you get stuck in that belief that maybe you're bad or maybe you're good or maybe you whatever actually don't that get is. Stuck. You actually don't get stuck. You're in a dynamic in which, mm-hmm. on the one hand, you want to create things. On the other hand... Um, there are limitations to your ability to do that because of your concepts. Because you have right. concepts. Any, and remember, I'm not talking about uh, negative beliefs. I'm talking about any concepts. Like, for example, self-esteem as a concept. So you have to think well of yourself. That's totally ridiculous, by the way. You know, I always think that people in the self-esteem business have not read a biography of successful people. Because if they had, they would see that most successful people did not have high self-esteem. Mm-hmm. But what they thought of themselves was unimportant in their either creative process or whatever else they were pursuing. And uh, the, the, I mean, on paper, you think, well, you know, if you think well of yourself, you think you deserve success, and then da 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 da. And in reality, uh, as evidenced by the biographies, that's simply not true. Mm-hmm. Right, and and it's interesting. I'm reading a biography about. Um, um, by Danny Meyer, who wrote a book called Sitting the Table, and he's created several restaurants 
here in New York. And what I found interesting about that, there was no conversation really about whether he believed he could open a restaurant. He just wanted to open a restaurant. Mm, and right. he just went ahead and opened a re- and opened a restaurant. And it wasn't like, oh, I, he had a foundation for that. Actually, he had foundations against that. People in his family thought restaurants were for you know, labor workers. They had they had a, a, a idea about that. Mm-hmm. So, but he he just taking this desire, like he really loved food. He yeah, loved good for him. He, he loved figuring the. You know, he just he loved. That's what he loved to do. He spent a lot of time yeah. traveling around the world, figuring out how he'd open his own restaurant. And mm-hmm. one day, just said, "Okay, I'm going to do this." But without any sort of sustaining belief or any any you know anything in his background well, would that would have no said basis. I can do that, you know, mm-hmm. Sandra, there'd be no basis for a sustaining belief. Right. It, you know, th- this is where right. Right. positive thinking is actually destructive to your creative process. Right. Because it's lying. It's saying it's advocating. It's pretending you know something you don't know. Mm-hmm. Now, if we were to say the truth, we'd say about him. He wanted to open restaurants, or at least to start with a restaurant, and didn't know if he could do it um, because he had had no background or experience in it. Now, later, after he'd done a bunch of them, I imagine the reality was it looks not that I can do it, but that it looks likely I can do it since I have done it in the past. And that's really telling yourself the truth. And positive thinking, I was uh, doing a workshop uh, at Sundance a few months ago, and I uh, was really ragging on positive thinking, and one of the people who in the course of, you know, a big advocate of positive thinking, he said, well, what's wrong with positive thinking? And I gave him a very <laughs> short answer. I said, it's lying. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, one of the ways that we create the uh, pattern of advancement is to is to manage something I call structural tension, which is the simple... Uh, difference between the desired outcome you have, this is what you want, this is what I want, and where you are, current reality, this is where I am. So I want to I want to create this, and here's where I am, whatever it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly, whatever it is, is your starting point, and you don't want to lie about that. For example, if you're making a painting, uh, which is a good example of structural tension, because the painter has the vision in mind of the outcome of the painting, and there might be you know, variations on that idea, but there's still that vision, that guarding vision. And then you have the current painting, you know, where are you right now in relationship to that, and that will guide your strategy, your actions, the tactics that you use in order to move from where you are to where you want to be. And once the desired state and the actual state are the same, you sign the painting, and when an artist signs the painting, what the artist is saying is this painting matches my vision of this painting. And they're done. Well, I think it's what's interesting is that when people look at sort of the, you know, the kind of current reality and then, you know, their vision and 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 they they decide at that moment it's impossible. They get very attached to one either the current reality or ta- very attached to the vision is impossible and then take no action whatsoever because they've already decided it's an impossible task based on whatever decisions they've made at either end, either at their current reality or looking at where they want to go. They've just sort of decided it's impossible and just don't ever even attempt it. Yeah, this is sort of like the subject matter of you can't invest your life spirit in compromise. Right. That, <laughs> right. Um, a lot of um, uh, most people have been um, it encouraged to see what's reasonable and then censor themselves about what their real desires might be. Mm-hmm. You, you right. I mean, some things are really more probable than other things, and some things are really impossible. Uh, but first and foremost, even if, if, even if you can't create them, mm-hmm. what's the point of lying to yourself about that you want them? Mm-hmm. I mean, for example, you may have bad health, and want good health, and just because you you may not be, may, even if it's not possible to have good health, why tell yourself you don't want good health? That's a lie. Tell yourself the it's truth. You know, I want right. good health. It doesn't do look like it's pro- probable that I could have it, but I want it. 
Okay. So step one in not investing your life spirit into compromise.